And Americans are being told that many of the mainstream Muslim groups are also moderate, when in fact, if you look a little closer, you'll see a very different reality. One of their primary tactics is deception. They present themselves as moderate leaders committed to peace and condemning terror. As Muslims, we want to state clearly that those who commit acts of terror in the name of Islam are betraying the teachings of the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad. But when asked about specific terrorist groups, CARE officials are either evasive or outright supportive. Does CARE have a position on Palestinian Islamic Jihad? We haven't published one. Now, don't, don't you okay. think that... Oh, you gotta go. You don't think they just lied about the terrorist stop. organization. It's not a terrorist organization. And in 2000, Abdul Rahman al Amudi openly supported terrorist groups. Anybody is a supporter of Hamas here? Yeah. We are all supporters of Hamas. Allahu Akbar. Anybody supports Hezbollah here? But Alamudi went further than just cheering for these groups. In 2004, he was actually arrested on terror charges. Perhaps what made the Alamudi case so troubling was that he was considered by many in the media and government to be a moderate Muslim leader. And Alamudi isn't the only leader who's had a problem with the law. Many so-called moderate Muslim leaders have been convicted on terror-related charges. To be fair, on their website, CARE has condemned Al-Qaeda by name. But why won't they condemn Hamas or Hezbollah? And you sit here now and in just one sentence tell me, CARE condemns Hamas and CARE condemns Hezbollah. I'm telling you in a very clear fashion, CARE condemns terrorist acts whoever commits them, wherever they commit them, whenever they commit them. That's not the same thing as saying you condemn Hamas and you condemn Hezbollah. Well, I recognize that you don't like my answer to the question. The FBI uncovered a secret document that seems to answer this and many other questions. This is believed to be the manifesto of the Muslim Brotherhood in North America. Hamas grew out of the Muslim Brotherhood. Palestinian Islamic Jihad grew out of the Muslim Brotherhood. From the Egyptian Islamic Jihad movement grew the current movement of Al-Qaeda, for instance. This 15-page manifesto outlines the goals and strategies of the Muslim Brotherhood's activities in North America. On page seven, the document states that their work in America is a kind of a grand jihad in eliminating and destroying the Western civilization from within. And then it speaks about setting up groups and mosques and Islamic centers to achieve their ultimate goal, which is to destroy the miserable houses of the West so that they will be expelled and that Allah's religion is made victorious over all other religions. And at the end of the document, it lists the organizations that can help in carrying out these goals. Not only are many of these groups still in existence today, but they are the very groups who are thought to be the modern Muslim leadership of America. These are the groups like the MSA, ISNA, and notably the IEP. And where does CARE fit into all of this? In 1994, CARE was established by three of the leaders from the IEP. And it's well documented that the IEP was essentially a front group for Hamas. So perhaps that would explain why CARE won't condemn terror groups like Hamas and also why they avoided participating in my Muslims Against Terror rally in 2004. In keeping with the goals of the document, many so-called moderate Muslim leaders have been caught on tape calling on America to become a Muslim country. We have a chance in America to be the moral leadership of America. The problem is when. It will happen, it will happen, and I have my eyes and no doubt in my mind. It depends on me and you. Either we do it now, or we do it after 100 years. But this country will become an Muslim country. If all Allah opened our eyes for the last time, you will be a sample for being the second largest religion in America, and so we are now. Islam is coming to America not through 
violence. It's coming to America the same way Christianity came to Rome. You've got Imam Abdul Musa, who is known as an influential speaker in the Muslim community around the world. Allah says that Islam will rise to its proper position in the world, whether these mushriks, whether these munafics, whether these criminals, whether these zalimeen, all of them, whether they get together, still Islam will reign supreme, whether they like it or not. He's quite open about his goals. Fact. On our website, we talk about the Islamic State of North America by 2050. Musa is also an outspoken supporter of Hamas. Hamas and Hezbollah are good people. They're good people. They don't deserve any condemnation. They deserve uh, uh, congratulations. They're good people. And also an admirer of Iranian President Ahmadinejad. Ahmadinejad? It's a good man. I got some pictures of him. That's uh, President Ahmadinejad, President Ahmadinejad again, President Ahmadinejad. Ahmadinejad uh, is a very good man, you guys, uh, and, and, and loved by most of the people around the world. Are you starting to see a pattern here? America needs to understand that the jihadist machine is already within the society. The leaders of radical Islam, or many of them, realized that they cannot win the United States at the military level. So they plot another thing or another plot to infiltrate America from within. 